but my great name is Mr. Gonapo. Uh, in our language for us, it means wooden man, uh, as told to me by my grandmother. In a Cree dictionary, it would say carpenter, uh, works with wood. But for, for our language, the way we um, would treat the name would be wooden man, not carpenter. Awesome, that's great. So you, where were you born and raised? I was born in Wetaskiwin, Alberta, um, and I was raised in Hobima. Mm -hmm. well, now it's Muskwetis, but right. it's been so long that I always call it Hobima. Yeah, from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, know, I know it's hard to, to um, <clears throat> change that sometimes when you're so used to something. Yeah. So, um, so your last name is Samson. Does that mean that you're also of the Samson uh, band? Yes. Um, my great, great, great grandfather was Kanataka, uh, so Samson. He was the one who signed the treaty. Okay. And yeah, uh, he was given that name, Samson, from the Bible, from the right. missionaries and stuff. So that's why our last name is Samson. Samson. Okay. Yeah. Was he a strong man too, your grandfather? From what I understand, <laughs> he was a he was a big, a large baby. Oh. If I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what a big person. And yeah. ironically, Joe Samson. Uh, the other portrait there, he was quite a short statured person. Oh, interesting. From what I understand. Yeah. Too. Okay. <laughs> so those, um, your great, great, great grandfather and your great grandfather, you have portraits here yeah. in the gallery. <clears throat> Just to mention, I think everyone understands that, but um, <clears throat> Byron is a portrait artist and so um, has been um delving into the portraiture for some time mm -hmm. how long have you been um doing portraitures technically since uh high school mm -hmm. around grade 11 grade 12 was yeah. more when i got more into it yeah um before that i was actually into comic book art i wanted to become a comic book artist a penciler oh and i was Wanting to do that up until graduation. Mm -hmm. And then the last year of uh, our art <clears throat> classes, my teacher got us to do uh, uh, still life of bottles, fruits, things like that, mm -hmm. and, and realism. Mm -hmm. And with that, it kind of progressed. And uh, I tried doing uh, people's portraits, but honestly, I couldn't get them right at mm -hmm. first. Okay. which was frustrating to me because I always excelled in art right. to a point. And then this one kind of stumped me at the okay. beginning. I was like, why can't I make this look like, like, the, person. The, like the person? Yeah. And quite honestly, up until now, I haven't shared this story. Okay. <laughs> but um, actually my cousin Shane, the mm. yellow bird, was in the same class. Mm. And he actually could make it look like the person. Like oh, he wow. actually was one of the main reasons actually when I started <clears throat> wanting to do portraiture better because his pieces were better than mine in that area. And I was right. like, I want to be at least that good. Yeah. If yeah. I can't surpass him, I want to be that good at least, right. you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. And so um, your cousin Shane, we should mention, uh, unfortunately passed away uh, not mm -hmm. too long ago, about a month ago. Yeah. And sadly, so we, we have a, his portrait still hanging on the wall here yeah. um, at, at the request of the family. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shane Yellowbird was um, a wonderful um, musician and uh, singer, songwriter, mm -hmm. you know, and I think he was a role model to many people and uh, just want to honor that. Oh, definitely. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, for cousin Shane, he, I told him I wanted his piece to be in this show mm -hmm. and he he didn't hesitate he was just like oh yeah yeah and mm -hmm. shane being shane he was like just make me look sexy all I ask. <laughs> <laughs> right? if you knew shane you know that's what he yeah. would say it's like, just make me look sexy i don't care what you do <laughs> okay make me look sexy I'm like yeah don't worry yeah. <laughs> well he did have some appeal that's for sure oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely yes was so fun to hang around with him. yeah he was so proud to have this piece and done by me. Yeah. I'm just really sad I never got to tell oh. him that, yeah, you're one of the reasons why 
Yeah. I did this is because I was trying to beat you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a little bit of competition yeah. in there. Yeah, oh, for yeah. sure. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's good. It's healthy. It's oh, healthy yes, competition, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, good stuff. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can find some questions here to ask you. Um, so, okay, we asked that. <laughs> so the exhibit is entitled Place of Honor. And we talked about that early on, but what does that actually mean for you? Like when you think of the place of honor and the people that you chose to, um, to, to draw? Well, for me, a place of honor means someone who is very truthful, helping, kind, and selfless. Mm. It doesn't matter if they were chief or just someone down the street. Mm -hmm. even a great leader could have no honor mm -hmm. and with these pieces I chose them specifically because some of them I knew others I've heard about mm -hmm. um, and others I've actually thankfully got to meet mm -hmm. and talk with and about I'd say about 90% of them are family yeah <laughs> but I can't really help that yeah um, yeah yeah <clears throat> the reason I chose them is because they have done something for and within the community mm -hmm. to help our people mm -hmm. and to help family, friends, whoever, and to pass on that knowledge the culture in, in some way. Right, yeah. right. That's awesome. Yeah. So many of them, like you said, are family members, but many of them are hereditary chiefs that, um, that you come from that line of hereditary chieftainship. So, you know, so they have left a legacy in a sense uh, to follow and to look up to so it's um, I think it's very honorable that they are they are they do have their portrait here in this gallery today so yeah, yeah. It's kind of different from my experience mm. for talking about the chiefs is because in our family we talk to them uh, uh, like grandparents not chiefs so for every chief that is here, I got to hear the kind of behind the scenes. Right. Who they were as a person, mm. not just as a leader or an official. Right, right. So it, it was really good to hear those stories instead of, oh yeah, he did this, he did that, he mm. did you know, this and that. It was just more like, oh, he was like this. And <laughs> did I ever tell you this story about him? And, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the inside scoop, eh? Oh yes, definitely, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> So I guess that next question is, and why did you choose who you chose to um, do these portraits of? And I know you kind of touched on it, but just if there's anything else that was an inspiration, I guess. Uh, many of them I wanted, for this show specifically, I wanted to make it diverse as possible. Okay. I didn't want to just do old chiefs that everybody can kind of look at their pictures. I wanted to grab some other people from our community that aren't mm. so, uh, I won't say recognized, but just known mm. okay. other than chiefs, because we've got dancers and elders, knowledge keepers, things mm -hmm. like that. And my uncle George, my cousin right. Shane. And yeah. um, I tried to include more <clears throat> people that weren't just, not to say that it's a bad thing, but just chiefs. Right, you know, right, yes, yeah. exactly. And because okay. I wanted to show that we're more diverse than just what kind of people see our culture as. Mm, for sure. In that, in that way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you mentioned your uncle George, little child, and we, we know that he's a well-known. Yeah. So that uh, creative side definitely runs in the family then. Oh, definitely. You know? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And on my Uncle George's piece, actually, I got to communicate to him while I was doing his piece. Mm. I was showing him the progress. And, and he was like, I love it, but you need more color. Mm. Yeah, I want more color. I'm like, whatever you want, <laughs> Uncle. Yeah, just tell me what you want. You know? Right. <laughs> well, if you know his work, it's, yeah. it's all about color. Yeah. Most and of his stuff is. It's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. And he offered yeah. me great advice on each of the pieces he said yeah I should do this maybe incorporate some of this and, oh yeah. good so yeah I love having him as an uncle and a way to 
contact him and yeah and a mentor in some ways right yeah. when it comes to that art oh definitely and yeah. i just wish i could kind of uh rise to the kind of state he's at right you know, well um, hopefully you're on your way so yeah. this is this is a nice show that to have and mm -hmm. and at the art gallery of alberta it's it's nice to have you you showing your pieces here and and people are probably getting to know your name a little bit out there now. So that's that's awesome. And I'm so thankful for that. Yeah, <laughs> no, for sure. Mm -hmm. So you have a number of pieces in here that are, are women. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's really nice to see. And these ladies, um, some significance um, to you personally and, and to community. Can, can you share a little bit about them? Uh, some of them are knowledge keepers, mm -hmm. um, dancers. Um, one of them is uh, Marilyn Rowan, who's a uh, mental health counselor. Mm -hmm. So she helps the community in that way, but also she's a dancer as well. And mm -hmm. many of them were just, yeah, a great big part of the community. Right. And what kind of a dancer? A uh, powwow dancer, sorry. Okay. Uh, I can't remember. I think she said traditional oh, dancer. Oh, nice. yeah. yeah, okay. And as you can see on my, oh, my Aunt Ivy's uh, piece, I got to draw her with some of her regalia. Oh, nice. Which yeah. I wanted to include with Marilyn too, but unfortunately with the time restraints, I yeah. didn't put another piece on there without going over. Right, you know, yes. Behind, so. <laughs> Deadlines. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. And, and does are they still alive and do they still dance oh, yes, and they're yes. still active um, in the community? And, my aunt Ivy doesn't dance anymore, as far as I know. Mm. Um, Marilyn's quite busy with her work, yeah. doing her work. Right. I think she dances from time to time. Mm. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, the golden age dancers, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And yeah. There's uh, Sheila Yellowbird in the corner there. That's actually Shane Yellowbird's grandmother. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're Wonderful. And knowledge keeper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other woman I have is my late grandmother, mm. Nancy Sampson in the corner there. Oh, very nice. Yeah. yeah. And I can't really speak to how she was as an elder because mm -hmm. I had such a close relationship with her. Right, right. <laughs> um, all I can say is that <clears throat> she was such a caring and loving grandparent. Mm -hmm more so than an elder to me. So that's why I can't speak on her as an elder. Right, right. Um, she tried to teach me so many things early on in life, but being so young, I never really listened yeah, too carefully. Yeah, right? We don't when we're but younger. But I still remember what, <laughs> what she told me yeah. and everything. For and sure. The reason I put her up there is because in the community, she helped with so many things that I'm just learning about mm. now, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, back way before when I was born in the 60s, actually. Mm. Um, but what I remember from my grandparents is that we, when I was younger in the 80s, we went on the powwow trail. Okay. So we'd take this big RV and we, my grandparents would load up all their beadwork, oh. which is what they did. Yeah. Um, did a lot of beadwork, a lot of regalia stuff, and we'd go to powwows and sell yeah. like, all this regalia and stuff. And, that's part of the artistic part of our family. My grandmother got to create all this magnificent beadwork. Yeah. And do you I, have any of her pieces? Unfortunately, I don't. Oh. You know, but I do remember <clears throat> one that she made that I think is still up in our church. Hmm. She made this beaded um, cross. Oh, wow. Yeah, that still hangs in there, I believe. Mm -hmm. to this day. Oh, but I remember her beating that and thinking, that's kind of weird for regalia but I didn't know it was for the church oh yeah <laughs> right. and I seen it in the church I was like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah it makes sense now yeah yeah that's awesome yeah. so nice to have a close relationship with your grandmother and and to honor her by you know the portrait that you have there yeah and that's that's really wonderful um we we should mention though that um there was another portrait that was hanging there yes and unfortunately um uh, he was looked up to as an elder. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> my mind is not, I can't think of his name oh, at the moment. His name was uh, Billy, Joey Deschamps. There it is. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> yeah. He owned land that uh, he can hold, hold uh, sundances and ceremonies mm -hmm. on his land. Mm -hmm. And he was 
a host of that. And mm -hmm. He's a great knowledge keeper. Yeah. And when I came up to him, he was he was taken aback. He was he was like very excited about it. He was yeah. Like, I'm so honored by this. This is going to be great. I can't wait to see it. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. He passed. He yeah. passed. Did he see it before he passed, or? Um, I'm not sure. I can't really speak to that because yeah. I think I did send him the progress pics of his piece. Oh, okay. But I'm not sure if he got to see the actual finish right. yeah. piece before he passed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And under the family's request, that it was asked to to remove it for a year, not to have any of his uh, any photos or paintings of him. Yeah. For at least a year so in honor and respect to the family yeah. um, it was re removed and but we do have a, a beautiful one of your grandmother in place so yes it's uh, nice to see her her there part of the part of the the exhibit so yeah, that's yeah. awesome <clears throat> um so let's see here so what do you hope the audience um, feels when they're looking at your pieces. What are your What is your hope that they're experiencing when they come through and look at your pieces? A sense of I don't know how to say it, but it, I don't mean it in this way. Is respect and a sense that you can feel that person, mm -hmm. sense who they are. Mm -hmm. Because that's basically what I try to do with every piece is to give off that essence of that person. Mm -hmm. And that's always been the hardest thing to come across on a, on a piece of paper. Right. <laughs> is yeah. to give the essence of that person. Like you can actually kind of feel what they're like mm -hmm. in life. Yeah. And for, for a lot of pieces, it's been... I wouldn't say difficult, but just mm -hmm. to get it right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And because a lot of people say, oh, it must be hard. It's like, no, it's just time consuming. It's, I know how to do it. It's just, it's got to be done in such a way that mm -hmm. you can bring out the essence of, mm -hmm. that, of that person. Right. But it's easy, it's relatively easy for me now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And then having pieces in there, like, uh, like for instance uh, your uncle george i mean there's a you have him painting something it looks like he's he's in the middle he's creating something he's painting so you know that i mean we know him so we, it's kind of yeah. like we know that that's what he does but that's that's a good example to show that you know he's he's creating something he's painting we know that he's an artist himself yeah. and um and then the you know the the larger picture he looks very thoughtful and uh, and I think, you know, even George himself is a very deep thinker kind of a person. I mean, he's that he usually chooses or, you know, there's definitely there's depth to it. Oh, yes. So yeah. it's it's kind of nice to see that. And and mm -hmm. like you said, that essence of who he is, is, is part of that. Yeah, that's a, it's really good. Awesome. Uncle, Uncle George is always um, sending me photos of our family. Oh. It's very interesting in our genealogy. Our yeah. Family. He's saying, oh, yeah, by the way, we're related to this. <laughs> and, and he's showing me new pictures of chiefs that I've never seen before. Yeah. And I'm so thankful for that because it creates more uh, more material that I can draw from. It. Right. I'm so thankful for him mm -hmm. for that. That's awesome. Yeah. And also yeah. younger um pictures of the pieces too yeah like there's a younger piece of joe and my grandfather and a bunch of uh on the other side of my family oh. that i've never seen before and i'm like this would make a great yeah. portrait yeah. So, oh yeah so maybe more in the works <laughs> oh definitely i'm always yeah. i'm always sketching and drawing and thinking about these things but yeah uh, work seems to get in the way of Time. Yeah, it's, I know, eh? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know how they say the artist is, you know, it's an ongoing and it's, it takes some time. And mm -hmm. once you're established and then hopefully you can, we are, our, our dream, of course, as an artist is to live off of our artwork and to, oh, yeah. and just to be in that space. And that, that would be a wonderful, a wonderful thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So why is it important to you to explore this type of, 
of, uh, of work and the portraitures that you've done and portraits you've done? Uh, for me, it helps to diversify my skill mm -hmm. and also to enhance my, uh, I don't know how you call it, observation. <laughs> okay. Every piece is unique and every person is unique. No people, no two people look the same. Mm -hmm. Every piece you have to really concentrate and think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even if I did like a set of twins, one's different from the other, no yeah. matter the way you slice it, they're still two different people. True. Yeah. And through portraiture, I've learned to notice little details of things here mm -hmm. and there. And it's, it helped me in other areas as well when I'm doing other pieces, but I hope to expand into other mediums and things right. like that. But for right now, this is where you are. This is where I'm at because it makes me happy. And I'm yeah. just so grateful to be able to do it. That's, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. We always want to be in that happy place. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So most of the people here are from your home. Uh, your like Samson band yeah. um, and I know I talked to you before and you mentioned that it would be really neat to go to other places and in other communities mm -hmm. and, and and interview and talk to ones that that might have uh, others that would be of someone that they would want to honor in their community mm -hmm. is that is that something that you're you're still thinking about and oh definitely in the works? if I could kind of do a traveling show type of thing Right. That would be great because because um, I think our people have a all of our people have many stories to tell mm -hmm. and many many different uh, people and leaders and elders and just people in general mm -hmm. in our culture to you know, show. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that would be really neat. Yeah. Have yeah. to apply for one of those grants, right? <laughs> yeah, that would be a dream job, definitely. Yeah. yeah. For, that would be awesome. Um, so, um, has have you noticed, or is, has the experience in having your art here at the AGA has it has it opened up opportunities for you, and have you seen like has it widened your um, your exposure, I guess, to to your art? Oh, yes. Um, I've gotten a lot of messages off of Instagram and Facebook of oh. how it work and they yeah. love the pieces and wondering, do I do anything else? And I was like, yes, I do, but <laughs> but for right now, this is just, yeah. Yeah. And um, a lot of questions I get asked is, do you do animals and pets and things like that? I'm like, yeah, it, if you can take a picture of it, I can... I can definitely do you it. You can try it. Mm. And the reason why I don't have many animal pieces is because right away people want to buy them. And, right. Oh. And I never get a chance to make prints or anything yeah. like that. It's just like, oh, I want this one. Yeah. It's actually a funny story about that. It's me and my fiance. Uh, I was actually in the Pinocchio Stampede. I think this was a year before the pandemic. Oh, okay. Um, I was in the gallery showing area. I was with all these other artists. And I was sitting around and I was bored. So I started sketching horses and mm -hmm. I was just kind of doodling away here. And then uh, a customer came by. I was looking at all my pieces, every, all this great art all around me. And I'm sketching these horses and he's like, I want to buy that. <laughs> I want that horse. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, I'm not even done yet. He's like, I don't care. I want it. I'll pay whatever you want. It's like, okay. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. And not that I would say it's upsetting, but it's kind of, um, not frustrating either. It's just kind of weird how you make all this great art and then you yeah. make something that's simple, so simple in a sense. And yeah. Then people want to. Oh, what about oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you'll have to do more horse paintings oh, or drawings, yes. I should say. Yeah, that's <laughs> actually what I'm focusing on oh, lately. Is okay. Horses and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're a, a wonderful animal. I love oh. horses. Yeah. So, do you see this as a stepping stone into other? Uh, other works or oh absolutely other, yeah. yeah um i've been thinking ever since this came out that maybe the next thing i'd want to do is just an all woman oh show interesting yeah. instead of just diversifying you just do an all 
yeah. uh, women's show. Okay. And then maybe all children's and then just kind of, you know. Yeah, playing different. with different themes. Yeah. And yeah, okay. That's really good. Yeah. Um, I guess that's the next kind of question. And so on your art artistic journey, what new things have you been exposed to? Exposed to, I've been exposed to quite a bit. Um, yeah. A lot of artists on Instagram have showed me their stuff and what they do. Yeah. And it's kind of like, I would love that. Like one artist, I thought, I would love that as a background, as this piece, for mm -hmm. this piece. Mm -hmm. I'd love this in the foreground of this. And then it's usually I'm thinking of how I can incorporate it into my into my style mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and things like that. Not that I don't love their work, which is right. I'm more in the creative mode when I see somebody else's work yeah. because it inspires you to kind of expand on your own for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, way. Mm -hmm. So your portraits are um, drawings and you use uh, a high end uh, crayons, pencils, and mm. all. is there anything else that you use in your? No, uh, pretty much that's it. Uh, color Premier pencils. Mm -hmm. um, the consistency in their leads, like the wax they use, the chemicals and whatever. Yeah. It's really great for uh, blending and mixing of the colors. Mm -hmm. And it were, I work really well with it because it's, it's sort of like painting. Okay. Except it's more just Mm. fine <laughs> right okay um i would like to get into painting yeah but... i was just gonna ask do you have you dabbled in the painting well okay. when we did acrylics i i really hated painting okay. at, the time, at the time right right because it was so loose and you had to you know mix okay. it freehand and then yeah it, yeah and with this um i can layer the the base color the shadows the lights oh, okay. the, you yeah. know the accents and everything and mm. it just I understand it a little more better for me. Right. That's why I work so well with it is because I know how to work with it yeah, for myself. Yeah. Well, and it takes time to master a medium, you know. And yeah. I mean, my 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 crayon. What if I use pencil crayons? I know it wouldn't look like this at all. <laughs> so, um, yeah. No, you can definitely tell that you have mastered those. You know that that medium, and that's that's wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Let's just see what we're time. Okay, we have a little bit of time. <clears throat> um, so other, I guess you kind of answered this one, but are there other subjects that you'd like to return? You said women and, and animals, horses. Mm -hmm. Is there others that you might want to expand into and try and see what that's like? I know I, I've seen some of your work, some of other your work, like you did a Bruce Lee yeah. uh, one. I thought that was, that was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, um, for different subjects, uh, right now, I'm mostly into portraiture. Mm -hmm. I'll only do animals as a throwaway, a throwaway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, mainly because I'm, I'm, I know it doesn't seem like this, but I'm so impatient. Mm. I really am impatient to finish the piece. Okay. Especially when it comes to hair. Great. Okay. <laughs> doing hair. <laughs> It's so annoying yeah. to just, you know, do each little hair and things like that. And that's why I'm challenging myself to kind of do wolves, horses, mm. animals with hair. So I can right. kind of get over that hump of, right. okay, I have to. Because they have a lot. Know. Yeah. <laughs> They're covered. Yeah. And most of my <laughs> actual commissions are people of, um, can you do my dog? Oh, you know, okay. It's like, okay, what kind of dog is it? Oh, it's this big, and then it's this big wavy little fluff ball and <laughs> hairy like, thing. Yeah, it's like, I can do it. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's gonna take a while. Yeah, <laughs> like, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, that's good, though. It's good to challenge yourself and to, like you said, get over that little that that hump or in the sense of you know uh, challenging yourself to to do something else or something that's not as comfortable, maybe. Yeah. And yeah. that's another thing I discovered with doing this. Yeah is that you have to learn to get over yourself right right okay because with most of these i yeah i've gotten to a place where like i just finished the face mm -hmm. and then i'm like i'm exhausted i just kind of just want to you know kind of okay fiddle around with it but with this um project i've had to be patient mm -hmm. i've had to wait and i've had to be like okay i can only do a bit of this piece right now right and that's okay. all i'll commit myself to today 
Mm-hmm. If I can get this done today, great. Yeah. I'll worry about the next thing tomorrow or mm. the next day or whatever. Okay. So through this, it's taught me how to be patient and to set a schedule for myself and to kind of um, pace yourself. Yeah, yes. pace myself and also confront doing hair. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. There you yeah, go. Because every piece I did, I was I would always look at the hair first. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be. <laughs> man oh man yeah. if anyone was bald it would be good right yeah be easy. if it was just bald and shiny, but okay great yeah. well there might be another uh, subject that you might, oh. might want to work on yeah <laughs> bald no and hairless yeah. <laughs> okay um so um, let's talk a little bit about um what you use for like paper and things like that what is there papers that you found are the best or things that you like and if um, you were going to share this with somebody uh, who's just learning what might be something that you, advice that you might give them uh, yes uh, for this specific project I've had to use a, a certain size paper right okay. uh, a cans uh, was it can- a Strathmore I believe it was called Strathmore paper it was 18 by 24 <laughs> And the reason I chose this paper is because of the neutral tone of the paper. Okay. So I can get that realism and I can get it done relatively in a quick mm, time. Okay. So you actually use the paper as part of, of your, the, the drawings. And, yeah. Okay. Paper is a major consideration for all my pieces. Okay. Um, yeah. Rarely will I ever, ever do just, just a normal white sheet of paper. Mm. Because you're starting from one one extreme, right? Like pure white, and you have to get to that value of dark, right? Okay. And that's why I like working with a mid tone, is because you can go either way. You can mm. either make it lighter or darker. So yeah. you have more that makes sense there. for yeah. sure. Okay. And on the type of paper I use, it depends on what style of drawing mm-hmm. I I decide to do. Because mm-hmm. a lot of you, you can't see it here, but when I do uh, different pieces, I, um, maybe a more refined piece that mm-hmm. has a lot of detail. Other ones, I'll do a quick line, you know, quick shading and not any blending of the colors, just kind of mm. uh, okay. matted it out. And because I'm so sensitive to the paper, that's, not, that's how I see it, is that I'm sensitive to the paper. So mm-hmm. if it was a a fine tooth, like a smooth paper like these, mm-hmm. the, the drawing is usually more refined and mm. more detailed. Okay. Hmm. And if it's a coarse paper, like a, I can't remember, it's Canson, a mm-hmm. pastel paper, that's it. Mm-hmm. If it's a pastel paper, my drawings become more loose mm, and okay. more uh, expressive, right. I would say. So it really depends then on on what you're using and, and how the, much detail or not that you can put into your, your works then. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And when I'm using cotton rag paper, it can go either way. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. And so you said, what kind of pencil pens you said? Uh, Prismacolor Premier pencils. Okay. And yeah. those are the best ones? if, uh, if for, so. for myself. They're okay. not the best. They're just for what you like. The, the way I work. Mm, okay. It's best for what I do. Right. Okay. Yeah, and how so I if do. someone's just learning, would you suggest trying that kind or just ex- exploring and experimenting with all kinds, I suppose? I would always say experiment with everything. Right. Never limit yourself to saying, oh, well, this artist uses this, so I must use this. Right. No, experiment with everything and anything you can. Yeah. Okay. And no product is better than the other because everybody is different. Like we all treat different things a different Mm -hmm, way mm -hmm. and at the end of the day there are only tools right yeah it just depends on how you use that tool exactly yeah well yours is yours you do a good job with what you use so (laughs) we're happy to see that (laughs) um do you have a favorite pencil sharpener (laughs) i do um i can't remember the name of it but it's um for those of you those people who are old enough to remember those old the cranking type yeah the yeah, cranking, yeah. <laughs> the cranking uh, pencil sharpeners um those get such a fine point on them mm. a lot of artists will use a knife and just kind of file it right. out and, no i can't i don't have time to waste on that so 
Yeah. I just use that. Oh, okay. Yeah, for myself personally. That works then. Yeah. yeah With the sure. Prisma colors, if it's something else, like if it's pastels, it's I can't sharpen it. So mm. I'm just going to, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Here, yeah. Um, and an eraser? Do you use an eraser? Or? I do use an eraser. <laughs> okay. Um, but there are so many different erasers for different mediums. Yeah. You okay. really have to know the working with right and how it's going to affect the uh, the piece mm -hmm. because on these on these pieces if i had to erase i would use a prismacolor gummy oh, gummy eraser okay because i can dab it and then it pulls up the color oh. rather than erasing than, it. than rubbing yeah rather than oh, rubbing okay. it out it pulls it up oh, that way it doesn't neat. smear anything around it okay so i don't i just have to it takes longer but it'll do a better well, job yeah. then, yeah. Okay, well, that's yeah. that's interesting. Never never even thought of that. That's really yeah. neat. Yeah, and it took me a while to figure that out. Yeah, <laughs> well, there you yeah. go. Awesome. Is there any other supplies that that you would recommend or that you like using? Well, right now, uh, mm -hmm. I just use Prismacolor yeah. pencils for what I'm Like I said, you can use anything to make art. It doesn't have to be a high-end right. product. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, like two years ago, I bought a like a five dollar watercolor set from Walmart mm. and just a couple of crappy paintbrushes from Dollarama. Yeah. And I can still make a great piece yeah. out of that. Right. Yeah. So that's when I tell people, well, what do you recommend? Do you recommend this? I was like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. As long as you're willing to put in that work. Yeah. You can make anything out of anything. Right. Okay. Well, and that's on that's another funny work. note. Um, yeah. I visited my brother, I think a couple of weeks ago, and he showed me a bunch of art pieces I did, uh, drawings I did when we lived in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And he pulled out this paper towel roll. Oh, yeah. That I did some drawings on that he kept. And he kept it. Oh. Like 20 years ago, he kept it. <laughs> and he said, Yeah, this is on a paper towel roll. Remember in the <laughs> office we had that? I'm like, Oh yeah, I can't believe you kept that, and all these like doodles were on it. And yeah, it's like yeah, I kept it all this time. It's like I kept all your stuff, man. <laughs> like, uh, I'm so thankful that you did. Oh, that's yeah. cool. That's really neat. So, yeah, that's the best example so you can, I can give. That yeah. you don't really need a high end. Yeah, yeah, you can product. do art on anything. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, any other advice you'd give to people that are just learning? Just keep at it and doodle. Yeah. <laughs> And don't, don't try to, how does that analogy go? Don't always try to bat for the fence. Like don't always try to make a home run. Mm. Something you can get done is when you're just fiddling around mm -hmm. with your drawings. Right. Okay. Yeah. Just keeping at it, right? Yeah, yeah. Little steps at a time. You can't, right. some of us were lucky that we can make those giant leaps Yeah. and figure out how to do it quicker and better and whatnot. For sure, but, for sure. Yeah. But it's in the practice, right? It's Oh, just, definitely yeah. it, it is. Yeah, um, for sure. The one thing that nobody sees is how much time I spend alone doing these mm -hmm. pieces. Mm -hmm. And they're wonderful pieces and I love doing them, but mm -hmm. it's, it's a time where mm -hmm. you're by yourself and you're in your own world, you're creating and mm -hmm. time just kind of... Is there a time of day that works best for you when you're, when you're doing work? It used to be at night. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I have an evening job now, so mm. that's kind of out of the window. So right. most of these were done in the afternoon mm -hmm. or in the late evening, but not very long in the late evening. Yeah. Okay. Do you find natural light helps when you're working or is it, or do you rather just have really good lighting? Good lighting is best, mm -hmm. but I can honestly work in the dark. Okay. It's, yeah, it doesn't have to be very well lit. But okay. Yeah, because yeah, for my process, I've already finished the piece in my head. Mm, okay. I'm just going through the process of putting it down. It, yeah, and putting it down. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing is that I wanted to say was that for me as an artist, I've already like all of these were already finished in my head. Right. I just wow. had to do the work to put them on the paper. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And the process that I disliked the most was the beginning when I had to lay down the foundation and oh, it's all okay. muddled and I still have to you yeah. know, coordinate everything. Right. But when it starts to come together, that's when I'm at my most happiest. It's like when I'm almost finished, it's like, oh, oh it come together. Yeah. Yeah. 
Awesome. And so do you work, do you have like a home studio? And like, where is that where you like? To I have work a little mostly? corner in our dining room. Okay, yeah. Because <laughs> I have this, like this big uh, wooden artboard that okay. I just lay on the, the kitchen table and I'm just sitting there like, okay. and I'm usually hunched over like this, <laughs> yeah. like that. Because right. I, I want to get that detail in and I'm like. Mm -hmm. Really close, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So my back's pretty yeah. Pretty sore, but yeah, it's pretty I guess it must get stiff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, go sit in a hot tub after or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Um, well, we we have a little bit more time, and it's I think it's probably Q and A time. Okay. So we'll just see if there's anybody in the audience. If you have any questions, please feel free. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> well, half of it, I get it from Alberta Art Gallery downtown in Red Deer. And the other place I get it from is from where I work at Domino's. Oh, in, <laughs> in Domino's Lancaster in Red Deer. Okay. Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> and okay. Um, the one day I went into work and I noticed they were throwing out the boxes yeah. of the dip cups, but I noticed there was a, kind of a thinner kind of cardboard paper okay and it was the same as the canton paper i use at home so i was like hey can you save these like yeah these okay papers. They, yeah. they're about the perfect size that i work in oh i see okay so every day when we have a big rush there's usually a, a stack of brown paper yeah in the back waiting okay. for me and that's how i get uh, free paper for a lot of my pieces <laughs> okay well whatever works right exactly and like that's what you said earlier yeah. it's, it doesn't matter what it is but as long as you're it works with you and you and you can apply your whatever you're doing on it yeah, yeah so that, that's great yeah and it's really really great paper actually it's okay oh, shame that you know a lot of dominoes are selling those out <laughs> yeah yeah well there you go well, that's actually, you know, for some people, you know, buying supplies is, is difficult. So yeah. if you can, if you can, then why not get it free if, if it's, if it's oh, doable, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So I'm just looking online here to see if there's any questions out there from people and there isn't yet. So I'm just put it out there again. If there's anyone that um, has the live feed, then please feel free uh, to uh, send us a message and we can answer it. Looks like we're we're running a little bit out of time, are we? Oh, you have a question. Okay, I was like, he's like, okay, good. Oh, good. My process is that if I've already decided to do a piece, I've already decided on the composition, the position, the, the, the pictures I'm going to be going from, it's usually already done in my head. It's just, I got to put down the initial sketch just so I can see if it'll work for what I want and if I can get it done. Um, the one thing I like to say to a lot of people for art, it's, it's up here, it's not mm. in here. This helps a lot, but it's here. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people think, oh, I can't do that. It's, no, no, it's like, no, you can. I just put a little more time into it than you have. That's all. Mm. That's the only difference between mm -hmm. me and you. Right. And it might not look exactly the same way I do, but it's not supposed to. You're a different person. Right, for sure. Um, I have a question here. Somebody has um, sent in. Uh, Tara Lee has uh, asked, would you ever consider teaching art classes? Definitely. I would okay. definitely love to teach art classes. Yeah. Um, the only concern I would have is that I would not know how to communicate properly what I'm trying to convey. Mm. That would really mm. concern me mm -hmm. is that I'm, I'm trying to get across a point that I can't really articulate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's just, it is practice, you know, yeah. to be able to get up there and do it. And then the beauty of that is you can show people too. 
Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, so. That's one thing I would love to do is yeah. to teach. I never thought I'd be saying that in my life, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I do have a student um, oh. right now. She's constantly working on her own things, and mm-hmm. calling me for advice and saying, well, what do you think of this and this? And we usually meet up every three months or so, okay. whenever she has the time. Yeah. And uh, we go over what she wants to do, what she wants to accomplish, right. how to get there. And, oh, awesome. So you're, you're mentoring somebody already. Oh, yeah. Yeah, That's definitely. great. Yeah. And she's doing quite wonderful. She won't say that about herself, obviously. Yeah. Which makes her an artist. So yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. an artist will always be their worst critic. And that's, that's yes. good because mm-hmm. if you become stagnant in something, that means you're not growing and you're not progressing. That's, yeah, for sure. So it's great that she's like, no, I'm not, I'm not great. It's like, yeah, keep that. Yeah. Keep that keep, attitude. Keep on it. I'm still like this with all of this i'm good but i'm not yeah, great yeah. yet yeah okay yeah. you have high expectations of yourself and, yes yeah and if you're not progressing you're just there's always a little yeah. room for improvement right exactly. okay yes. yep. <laughs> That's good. okay cool uh just double check here hey okay. no one more place to look here no okay is there any other questions yes uh, do you think that a realistic style is required to send the message that you want from this exhibition? No, definitely not. To send a message, one merely has to have an idea. And an idea can form many different uh, ways to deliver that message. This was just merely one way that I could express myself. And if I had a different style, or if I was focused on many different things, I, I imagine these portraits would all look vastly different. But for this show, I wanted to maintain a, 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 a continuous style rather than mixing up each piece, which I imagine would be a lot more interesting to mm-hmm. the exhibit. But for this, I wanted it to be sort of uh, refined and dignified, I guess. Mm being uh, Mm -hmm. expressive awesome yeah that's really good yeah Um, how old were you when you decided to work for art how old were you realize Hmm. (laughs) i'm trying to think back uh it was about grade three i believe yes grade three about eight Mm. nine um Ironically, because we had um, the classroom I was in in grade three had a had a contest. Uh, it was like it was something to do with Superman, I believe. Oh, okay. Like, uh, who can do with Superman? You get like free lunch at Superfoods or something like that. <laughs> okay. And everybody, as soon as they mentioned Superman, everybody in the class just turned to me because I've been doodling, you know, comic book art oh, in my little okay. binder. Everybody kind of turns to me, and I'm like what yeah <laughs> and they're like oh man he's gonna win like, you know <laughs> yeah. i really had the first um inkling that okay maybe maybe i'm pretty good at this stuff because <coughs> before me. that i was just kind of doodling and doing my own thing mm-hmm. and i didn't think oh, nothing of it yeah yeah and i'm sorry yeah that's when i thought <laughs> all right maybe i'll keep at this and thankfully yeah this is excuse me (laughs) sorry about that (laughs) a little dry in the my throat so sorry Uh, but that's awesome though it's a very very young age that you you realize that this could be something that you wanted to do more of oh yeah definitely Mm -hmm. and uh, and also when I started drawing it was because of my cousin Alistair who I lived with at the time um, he's about seven years older than I am. When I go down into his room, because he had a basement room, like in the basement, and he was doodling too, except he was doing comic book art from like um, uh, Casper, Richie Rich, those kinds of oh, cartoon okay. type characters. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'd watch him draw them. And that's kind of where I got those first <coughs> uh, inspiration to start drawing, because he mm. showed me how he did it. And then mm. I kind of expanded on that. Mm. Yep. Yeah, great. 
any other questions or we're we're good <laughs> so have you thought about transitioning aside into like other material like leather or something like that if you're painting in horses for example you can use like horse leather or something like that or tell them where you're going <laughs> uh, yes, I've been actually, I've worked with leather about five years ago, and I lost interest in it simply because I didn't like the tools Yeah. Uh, with leather working. Um, I didn't like them then. I'm not saying I wouldn't like them now if I retried it, but back then, yeah, I was experimenting with leather and different materials. And this kind of, I wanted to focus on this more than expanding but now i'm at a place with all of this that i'm like okay maybe i can move on to something different mm. yeah. you need like the cool thing first like long weather and transpose yeah um, yeah um, <laughs> i also really expanded happy. yeah <laughs> yeah that's another creative side of me is yeah i have these coats these long coats and the reason why I have them is because I couldn't find them anywhere right I can't find a decent long trench coat that goes to the floor without it being like you know over a thousand dollars right and, yeah and I thought well I'm smart enough well, I just grab a sewing <laughs> machine and see if and I can try do it, it myself and <laughs> to a point where I can actually do the whole coat myself the lining and everything else and yeah it's like okay that was relatively easy yeah i don't know why people are struggling with it <laughs> <laughs> oh that's awesome yeah. it just came naturally then to you that's yeah. good well, maybe I you're find... a fashion designer as well in, yeah, inside maybe. of you <laughs> i find well for me anyways what i've learned is when i have a sudden interest in something mm. it's way easier to learn everything about it mm -hmm. like you instantly pick up the lessons that you have to learn to be good at that right yeah and i figure that's with anything in life, yeah. really. I mean, yeah. If you're interested in it, for sure. Yeah. That's probably why I didn't do great at schools because I was not interested <laughs> in learning all that stuff. Yeah. But in art, um, me and Shane actually never did any of our assignments. Mm. Both of us were just doodling around. <laughs> really? And our, our art teacher actually passed us just on our doodles and little things. Wow. While my okay. brother Craig had to create these big, huge paintings and you know, actually do the work. Yeah. <laughs> and me and Shane were just kind of coasting along on our, our talent and yeah. kind of felt bad, but I was like, hey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome. Okay. Well, um, I think if there isn't any other questions, uh, but if there is, feel free, jump in. Um, but I'm, I'll double check here just to make sure we haven't, I haven't lost anybody here, but okay no we don't have any other chat questions double check this okay nope we're good okay i guess that's that's where we are so we can we can wrap it up so <clears throat> thank you all for coming and it was it was it's been a, a privilege to to work with byron so we're really happy that he was able to come today and do our q our uh, interview and our well all the q and a's and everything so yes thank you so much for being here byron and we really love your your work so we want to see more <laughs> thank you so much for having me and thank you for the opportunity i mean it's just been one heck of a, a ride so far i mean good awesome. <laughs> i've loved every minute of it